What's going on guys? In the last video, we made these drugs. It's an active item that the character is able to pick up from the item room. And in the comments of the video, I said the first comment gets to decide what effect the drugs will have. Jaden says, what do you think about sacrificing a small amount of health for an increase in attack speed and movement speed for the rest of the area? So this is actually a really good idea. I did program the drugs already to add a random stat, but I think that's kind of boring. And I think this is way better. And it also gives me an opportunity to add an active item. So I've already drawn the slot for an active item in my game and I haven't used it yet. So this will be perfect. So when I press the right click, you can see it actually uses the drugs. It damages, so it uses the item, and you can see that there's like a timer counting down, right? And then it did damage to my player, so it took away half a heart. I'm probably gonna make this an entire heart. It's cool, and so you get extra move speed. You can, I don't know, you can see, obviously you haven't seen my character moving probably, but I'm moving faster and the attack speed is significantly faster. And I've also added this awesome effect that really fits with you being on drugs. Like all the colors are like changed and everything's shifted. And I'm gonna show how I've done all of this. So uh, you're gonna want to stick around to the end of the video this is going to be pretty good so i'm going to do this completely out of order because people get bored really really quickly and i'm going to do the most interesting part first and then i'll do the less interesting parts at the end okay so um my map is in the wrong spot obviously because i am spawning in the item room because i have a god script that just spawns me in whatever room i choose but you can see that there's the drugs on the pedestal or whatever right and you pick them up and it gives it to you this effect is probably the coolest thing right like this creepy effect this is called an chromatic abrasion am i saying this right Hang on. Chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration. Gotcha. So this effect is called a chromatic aberration. And um, basically what you can do is if you go into your global volume, which should come default if you're using the, the URP, but if it's not there, you can create a new global volume just by right clicking. And I think it's, yeah, right here, vo volume, global volume. And then inside of this, this is not going to have this by default okay so this chromatic aberration will not be there by default if you go to the very bottom here where it says add override you can click on this and in this post-processing stack if you click on this it actually lists all of the effects that you can add to your game and chromatic aberration is one of the effects yeah okay so you can only add effects that you haven't already added so yeah so we have this chromatic aberration uh and we're just going to turn this on and we'll set the intensity to zero so then inside of the code we're easily able to change this so the code that makes this change is actually as follow so this is my um script that runs when i actually get the drugs right like when i use the drugs so what you need to do is declare a chromatic aberration and then i have player volume profile try get chromatic aberration so we want to make sure that like we'll try to get it and if it's not there it will give up or whatever it outputs this chromatic aberration to this variable player is something that is specific to my game you probably won't have player in your game so player for me is a static class where i store all of the variables for my character so things like his health how many bombs he has how many keys he has it it's not rocket science i'm basically storing all the values for my player in a static class called player if you make a variable static inside of a static class it means you can access them anywhere inside of any of your scripts i've created this um global volume inside of the player so let me just type in volume here so i can find it so i've got this static volume and then i have a script that's attached to my player called initialize player and then inside of this I'm setting the volume. Let me just control F that same thing again. So I have this as a serialized field, this Unity engine rendering volume volume as a serialized field so I can drag into it, right? And then I have my player's volume being set to this volume. And then in the inspector, if I click on my actual character, which this script is attached, inside of the initialized player, there is a volume right here for this, right? And I've dragged my game volume, which is this one, onto that slot so that I can access it, right? So inside of my script, basically I'm just getting the chromatic aberration and then I'm setting the the intensity of it to four. Now this draggy bar only actually goes to one, which looks pretty cool, but it's not the same as when I right click, you can see that this is way, way more. So this bar only goes to one, but you can actually set the intensity past one. You just have to do it via code. So inside of this, like you can only drag the bar to one, but this doesn't actually, I don't think this has a limit, probably like the limit of an integer. So like 2 million and something will probably be the actual limit. But um, yeah, you could just set this number to a, a number higher than one and it will actually go past the maximum intensity. So this is how you actually set the override. I also have variables for temporary run speed and temporary attack speed saved in this static class, right? 
So I'm incrementing these temporary values. And then in my other classes, like my running class, like my movement class, I have referenced this in the movement. So I know this is a lot of boring stuff, but the I guess the most important thing is this is the code to make this happen. So to make this cool, like druggy looking effect happen, this is the code for that. Okay, so in a previous video, I showed you how to make scriptable object to create items, right? So uh, right now I've only got four items. So I have the drugs, the gem staff, the holy cross, the mace staff. Now the benefit of the scriptable object is obviously that in order to make another item for my game, I don't have to go into the code. I can right click, I can click create and click player item and that will make an item. And then I just have to fill out these fields and automatically when I fill out the fields, it will just be added to my game automatically. Now I did a whole video covering how to add that. So I'm gonna put that uh, as at the very end of the video, there's gonna be a link to that and you can follow that and watch that video if you don't have this. This is the best way of doing this. Like if you try to do it the other way, it's like really, really bad. And uh, this is just like really, really easy, right? So I've reused some of the fields in this. So if I click on my drugs item, you can see that the attack modifier I've set as active item. So instead of making an extra slot for active items, I'm just using the attack modifier. If it's active item, I check this in the code. If it's active item, we're gonna be adding it to the active item. And then the picture, which is what actually shows up in the top left corner, is dragged into this item image slot. So what I did to get the picture was actually kind of weird. I'm gonna show you what I did. So if I turn on my green screens and I turn off the item room uh, righty and then if I take the drugs and I rotate it uh, to zero so it's flat up and down and then you can hide your player by just see this little eye icon on the left you can hide like your character or whatever and um, by putting green as a background I can take a screenshot of the item by pressing windows shift s or if you have a, an uh, app like snag it or something like that you could do it through that and by doing this, um, make sure that the, the thing that you put in the background is unlit so it doesn't have shadows, right? By doing this, you can get a copy of the item with, with no um, background, right? Like this has a green background. So if I go into any application like paint or anything like that, and I use the fill tool and I erase, um, I don't think paint has like a transparency object. So you'll have to use like sketchbook is free or you could use Photoshop or something like that. Something with layers, right? You can erase the background. And then when you erase the background, you can get an image that looks like this that doesn't have any background. And then that's what I'm using for the picture of the drug. So like, I, I don't know if you saw that in the top left corner when I was playing, let me just see, hang on, let me just pick up both things. So I, I just wanna show you this anyway. So you can see in the top left corner, I have the drugs. This is how I got the picture for this, okay? So this is just a panel, right? Like a UI panel that I put here. And then this is the picture that I've put there. And then in the item interaction script, this is what happens when I run into an object. So I have a character controller collider hit. If the state is idle or walking and I run into something that's tagged gold item, it will pick it up or whatever, right? And then this is the script that actually runs. So if the attack modifier is active item, then we're gonna invoke the attack modifier name. Sorry, if it's not active item, we're gonna invoke the attack modifier name. So if, if it's not active item, we're gonna be doing, we have to make a method for each one and that'll be in this region up here. Yeah, so then for, if it if it isn't, like if, if it is active item, so this means not, by the way, uh, the exclamation mark means not. So if it is an active item, we're setting the sprite to the item image, which we've dragged into the slot in the thing. And uh, when you take the picture or whatever, like when you create an image out of it, you have to set it to a sprite. So, um, You'll have to change this to a sprite in order for this to work. And then, so then we're setting the color to white. So the background of this, you can see it's kind of transparent, but color.white doesn't have any transparency. So because the drugs will be faded, if, if we don't do this, it will be transparent still. So you have to, I set the color to white to make it not transparent. And then we're setting the player's active item to be this item right? So player again is my static class where I have everything saved. So I have a variable called active item, which is the string, right? And the active item is going to be the name of whatever item we run into. And then the cooldown is going to be the cooldown from the thing. So I did have to actually add a field in the scriptable object. It's right here, active item cooldown. So I can set the cooldown of the item here. And then, then I have a player active item script, which uh, it's pretty self-explanatory what it does. If I press the right mouse button, which is get mouse button one, and the state is idle, 
and the item is not on cooldown, it will start the countdown timer, which does this lot. This uh, basically is what changes the text in the thing, right? Like in the top left corner. And then it will invoke, so it gets the name of the item without clone, because when you spawn an object, it actually puts clone at the end of the name. So it replaces clone and it invokes whatever um, the item name is. So I will have a method for each name. So invoke, what that does is it runs whatever this is. So this would be drugs, right? So this, the name of the object here is drugs, essentially. So it's like invoking drugs and because drugs is also the name of this method up here, it will run this. So I take damage, which is a method that I made to take damage. Mm -hmm. And then I do the chromatic aberration thing. I increase my run speed and attack speed. And then I increase my animator's attack speed, or I don't increase it, but I set it to be the attack speed plus the temporary attack speed. And I start this coroutine. So this coroutine will wait for a certain number of seconds and then reverse everything that I've done. Okay, so this is how active items are going to work. And in this way, all I have to do is when I drag an item into the game and I want it to be an active item, I just have to tag it as an active item in the attack modifier, set an attack time cool item cooldown, put a picture into it, and then I just have to write a method for what it does here. This makes it really, really, really easy to add uh, active items to the game. It's a reusable way of doing this that's very, very sustainable. I'm going to be adding these summaries to each of them so that I can know what each of them does and their item number and that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah. I'm All right, guys, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. It really means a lot to me. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like the video and uh, subscribe to the channel. And uh, yeah, I do have a Discord channel as well. So if you guys are stuck on anything or you try to get this to work and it's just not working for you, uh, you're always welcome to join my Discord and just shoot me a message. And uh, yeah, I think this turned out really, really good. I think this is like the perfect effect for drugs. And uh, thanks, Jaden, again for the idea. Um, I mean, obviously not the chromatic abrasion idea, but the idea to do this, it's a lot better than the idea that I had uh, originally. And uh, yeah, I hope I'll see you guys in the next one.